Bikers Church, Port Elizabeth welcomes you. The previous videos can be accessed by typing Sifri Duva, YouTube. I've also added my phone number. I've been a seafarer in one way or another for most of my life. An interesting article explained why most ships' underwater sections of their hull are painted red. And because of modern coatings, etc., etc., the reason goes back into the sailing ships. The romance of a square rigger has always been a secret love. Crew on these old style ships will quickly tell you there's nothing romantic about climbing masts to adjust sails and gale force winds. I'm busy restoring a model sailing ship, and in my man cave I have the laminated plans of the Cutty Sark, the full scale plans. She was built in 1869 and she was one of the fastest sailing ships of her day. Wooden hulls are susceptible to sea worms and barnacles that eat the wood. And you can see an exaggerated example of that yacht over there. Needless to say that you discover that you have a problem when ships are supposed to be on the water and not have the water in them. When the timber is deteriorating, the ship's hull starts to leak and you can see the deterioration in that example over there. The crew's energy is now diverted into bailing or pumping water out of the ship so that the ship does not sink. So needless to say, ships have to come into dry dock so that they can replace the rotten timbers that you can see there with the new timbers. They've also found that by adding a layer of copper sheeting, that that protects the hull quite a bit better. It would also preserve the timber. And that's where the redness of the underwater came in many years ago in the sailing ship's days. A ship is built according to design specifications as laid out in the plans. It is only over time when facing the challenges of the seas and the harbours that the ship's hulls have deteriorated. It's such a wonderful analogy for us. Psalm 139 verses 14 to 16. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are marvelous and my soul knows it very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo and in your book all my members were written. The days were formed and not one was among them. You see, that is the design that God has for us, a good design, a wonderful design. And in essence, we should be feeling that in our hearts and minds that we are wonderfully made by God. But you know what? We don't always feel that way. And think of what Jesus said to the Pharisees in John 80, 44. You are the children of your father, the devil, you, and you want to follow your father's desires. From the very beginning he was a murderer and has never been on the side of truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie he is only doing what is natural to him because he is a liar and the father of lies. And so this is what happens. This is the design. This is what God has for us. And over time lies begin to creep into our lives because that's what Satan wants. You see, circumstances happen and people say things over our lives that do not correspond with the truth that God is, and we land up adopting it. And that begins to eat away at the truth of God's original makeup for us. We often put it out of our mind, or so we think. Many times it's because we can't process it because we don't have the knowledge. Like the worms and barnacles that are hidden underwater, the lie is quietly eating away at us. The concept was developed by Dr. Ed Smith of Theophostic Prayer Ministry. His example was that no matter what he did, his father would make it better. In res it resulted in Ed being very defensive. Even after qualifying with a PhD, he had to track it back to that first memory when his father took his school project to fix it. He had to go back into that memory and remove that feeling, remove that lie that he was not good enough. 
Some of the signs that lies are eating away at our inner self are we're being very defensive. Many times we are carrying hurt and sometimes we, in, in, we then hurt other people. We can, sometimes we want revenge or we're self-effacing. And this is a photo of when I was 16 and that was I, what I was like. I wanted to always hide because of my shame that I felt. Sometimes we become hypercritical in what we are facing or trying to put the blame onto other people. And often this is exposed by those closest to us. We can't hide it. And that's when the arguments and fights begin to start. You see, some people give in to addictions like food, drugs, sport to suppress or compensate those feelings that are eating away at us. It begins to tire us because it's like bailing water constantly out, out of our sinking boat or ship. When this is exposed, we need to go back into that memory to have that lie revealed. We need to come into the dry dock of God's prayer to have that lie or that plank replaced with God's truth. And there you can see the old plank and the new planks being put in its place. We do this by asking God to go back into our past and show us what happened, why is that lie there, and then ask God to remove it and put the truth in His place. With that new plank of truth in place, we then ask God to cover us with His armor, like for instance here with the copper plates that were put on the, on the sailing ships. Ephesians 6 talks about the breastplate of armor. And I like this color because it goes with the red. And so also our covering needs to be the blood of Jesus that covers us, that protects us from the lie beginning to eat in us. And we begin to know that this process is working when we find Ephesians, uh, sorry, Philippians 4 verse 7 becoming a reality. And the peace of God which transcend, passes all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. When that lie is there, we don't have that peace. But when God's truth takes over and removes that lie, that peace begins to grow within our lives. We can be at peace regardless of what is going on around ourselves. We can even be at peace with people that are struggling with a lie that is eating away at them. We'll be floating in the world without having the world within. And today is a good day to start that process. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to say thank you that you understand us. You, Your design and your plan is that we are perfect. You have a purpose for our lives. And that plan and purpose is often thwarted because lies have been allowed to eat away at us. We ask you to show us how to develop this process, how to identify what it is that is doing this and replacing it with your truth so that when your truth is fully at work, we will enjoy the peace that you have promised us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.